morning, everyone. Come on, can you stand to your feet this morning? Can we start by giving Jesus a, a hand clap of praise in this house? Come on, can you give Jesus some glory? So good to me. 
How many of you got some things today you need the way maker to take care of? He's here in our midst. All we need to do is ask. We serve the way maker, the great I am. You know, we sing a song that says, I, he is the great I am. He can stop the moon and stars. He can do anything he wants because he's the great I am. So he can take your problem, your need, and fix it because he's the great I am. Let's sing that one more time, Waymaker. this morning with our guest. That feels weird calling you a guest. <laughs> our family, yes, yes. How many of you are glad to see TJ here this morning? Tristan, the family. It was a nice surprise when Pastor Mark told me that uh, TJ would be leading worship this morning. I said, good. <laughs> Let someone else do it. I enjoy it. I enjoy listening to it. I enjoy TJ. Amen, amen. I tell you what, go ahead and be seated for a minute. We have got a, uh, a short video. Uh, how many of you are familiar with or have ever heard uh, about Prayer Mountain in Korea, Seoul, Korea? Well, they, they, it's, we've got a video we're going to show you, but they, um, for years and years and years, they pray at this mountain they've got, and uh, they prayed for the United States, and those that have been there have, have been experienced Prayer Mountain and went up to it, but they're going to be in the United States coming up here soon, and uh, our church is involved in it, so we're going to watch this video, and it'll tell you all about it, and then we'll go from there. Many of us are in shock as we look at the direction of our nation. What has happened since the turn of the century is almost breathtaking. But this could be our greatest moment. You see, there is a rising tide of unified prayer across this nation and around the world. This year, in May, we're calling for a national 
prayer meeting effort. From early in May, national leaders will call the nation to pray every day throughout the month of May and into early June. And, and then we'll begin an intense prayer meeting week from Wednesday, June 1 through Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, June 5th. We're asking churches to open their doors and call for prayer, to host prayer meetings, not preaching meetings, but prayer meetings to pray for this nation, for revival and spiritual awakening. And during those days, hundreds of intercessors will come to America from one of the prayer mountains in South Korea. They'll travel to cities from coast to coast and border to border to pray morning, noon, and night. They will pray. They're not coming to preach or to teach or to train. They value prayer. They believe that in prayer, God is invited to a nation. In fact, these intercessors associated with the World School of Prayer have impacted more than 100 nations. Dr. Nam Su Chow, the global leader of this effort, said to me, America has been good to South Korea. You sent missionaries, support, assistance, even your military. South Korea has remained free, a beacon in Asia, the 10th largest economy in the world, home to some of the largest Christian churches on the face of the earth. And now you are in trouble. You need our help. And the greatest help we can give you is prayer. And that is a gift that all of us can give to the nation. Prayer, a prayer meeting revival for the nation, across the nation, churches, pastors, all of us crying out to God for a great spiritual awakening. In the midst of this will be March for Jesus. In the midst of this will be 10 days of prayer by the Messianic community leading up to Pentecost. In the midst of this will be the global go day of prayer. And at the very beginning of this will be the national day of prayer. So many things converging in May and June. Join America's prayer meeting movement. Follow the Korea Pentecostal Prayer Project in a city near you. And join me and other leaders on Pentecost Sunday for a national virtual prayer meeting for the nation. Amen. How many would like to be a part of that? Amen. Well, you're going to get the opportunity. Uh, th Thursday, June 2nd, I believe, is, uh, uh, is going to be prayer at our church with the delegates or the, from Korea, and they will be here. And again, it's nothing but prayer. No one's preaching. No one's teaching. We're praying. And it's so. I think it's awesome that Korea, for so many years, we prayed for South Korea. I remember as a child, we uh, had prayer meetings in our church because I was growing up praying for South Korea and for their protection and for their uh, livelihood and for everything about them, for their spiritual uh, well-being. And now they recognize the fact that America needs their help and the best they can do for us is pray. So if you want to be a part of that, Thursday... June 2nd, and I believe it's at 6.30, am I not? Yes, 6.30, right here at Celebration Church. Uh, come and be a part of that. We would appreciate it. You'll be blessed. And so, uh, again, make plans to be a part of that June 2nd, 
here at Celebration Church at 6.30 p.m. And in lieu of that, June 1st, not this uh, Wednesday night, but next Wednesday night, there'll be no service. Uh, we'll uh, do that in, instead on June 2nd. So anyway, and that's for all departments, no youth, no anything. All services are canceled for that night. Amen. All right. Uh, a few announcements. SoCal Ladies Chosen Bible Study. Be sure and be a part of that. You can, uh, I think it's live and Facebook, so you can be one or the other. Uh, and it uh, gives you all the information there you need to know about that. Moving on up, June 5th, Promotion Sunday. How many are ready for Promotion Sunday, all you kiddos? Yeah, yeah, that's June 5th. And this is a good one, Saturday, 18th. Uh, June 18th, 1130, Father's Day lunch. There's a sign-up sheet out in the uh, foyer. Be sure and sign up for that. Some have already done so. Be sure and sign up for that and honor our fathers. Uh, this is Mission Sunday, first Sunday of every month. Amen? All right. And uh, this one, well, I'm getting the signals back there, everybody. <laughs> and we have SoCal Summer Camp, and uh, all the information is on the, the board there. And I'm told that if you'll scan this QR code at the bottom, it'll give you all the information you need. And if you can't scan it here, there's one, I, I believe it's scrolling in the foyer on the screen out there as well. But uh, scan the QR code, and it'll give you all the registration information. All right. And there are ways now, it's time for our tithe and offering, and we're going to do something today special because we've got a very special guest uh, with us and his family. Uh, we're going to uh, take our tithe and offering, but we're taking a special love offering for Pastor TJ and Kristen, Tristan, all right? So ushers, if you'll come, and we're going old school today, is that all right? Is that all right if we go old school on you? We're going to... Have the ushers come and give you an opportunity to give. Of course, there's still the ways you can give uh, through the text or through the by scanning a QR code. There's the box at the back of the uh, foyer or the sanctuary there. You can give that way as well if you're not prepared to give. But uh, today we're going to give everything that's not designated to tithe to uh, Pastor TJ. Amen. All right. Orlin, bless it for us if you would. Amen, amen. Pastor TJ is going to come in a moment, moment and give us a, a special word. How many are excited about that? I'm excited to hear what's going on and what, he's, what, the God, what God has given him today, all right? Uh, so as you give, and there's my wife. <laughs> she does this to me at home, sneaks up behind me, and I just I feel her presence. And I believe as soon as the offering is taken, we can go ahead and dismiss the children and uh, they're going to be out with Darla. And you want to say something. I, I... Listen, we have been, I have been a part of the kids' church now for a couple of months. And I was so excited. As most of you know, the joy for me is singing and ministering through music. And when we used to take trips to South Africa, um, we would see just the little kids. I mean, they were worshiping and praising God. And you could tell on their face it wasn't just something that they had seen. They knew the value of what worship is really for and what worship can do in your life. So I started planning um, a little musical with your church kids. The kids' church is growing, praise God. And um, I want to remind the parents and the grandparents that June 5th, will be their performance date. Now, next week is the only week we have left for a dress rehearsal. I know in the last few weeks it's been a little crazy, and the children have not all been here. But in order to perform, they have to be here this next Sunday because that is their dress rehearsal. Otherwise, we will have to postpone it. And we don't want to do that because those kids are so excited. They are learning scripture verses. They are raising their hands and learning what praising God is all about. So I'm really excited for them. I see them. In fact, last week, the last week we were out ministering in music, but the week before we were here, I had them all pray. I'm teaching them the value of prayer. 
And it got to one little girl in the front as we were praying, and she said, and bless my teacher, Miss Darla. And I thought to myself, this is awesome. We're teaching them to pray for their moms and their dads and their grandparents and the sick. I actually asked them, do we have any prayer requests like they're adults, you know? And um, they'll tell me now, they'll say, can you pray for my uncle? He's sick. Can you pray for this? Can you pray for that? So I'm excited what this church, kids' church program is now doing. We have, because of the COVID, um, there wasn't that many because of the shutdown, but now they're growing again and they're learning how to worship God because, guys, they're our next generation. And if we don't teach them at a young age, I, I remember my family used to travel and sing, and I remember that my mom would just get me up there and say, now we're praising the Lord, and this is what you do. You raise your hands, you know. And so that's what we're trying to do now. We're trying to teach your kids the value of, um, of those things. So make sure if you're a parent or a grandparent that you make sure those kids are here next week because they have to be here next week in order to perform. Like I said, that's our dress rehearsal. And there's so many of them that have even memorized scripture verses too. So be faithful in that with those children and grandchildren as well. They've got a really big surprise for you and you're going to be encouraged and you're going to love it. Amen. I've heard these kids sing, and they, they know how to worship God, and that's going to be an amazing thing. Pentecost Sunday, they're going to bring down the house. Amen. Going to have our kids usher in Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, are you ready for the word? Are you ready for Pastor TJ? Come on, give him a big hand. He's, a, he's one of ours. I'm going to use this one right here. How's everyone doing? Oh, man, you guys awake. Look at your neighbor, shake them, and say, wake up. All right, good. It's uh, say, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. It's so good to see you. So glad to be here uh, in Bakersfield. So many people that I want to point out, but I'm going to get myself in trouble if I start pointing out people because I don't want to overlook anybody. But it's so good to see everyone, and uh, we, we are so glad to be here. I want to do this, and I know Pastor Mark would do this if he was here, say, how do you know that? Because I served here five years with him, and I think I know the guy pretty well. He's not here right now, but, uh, but I think he would do this. I want to ask Jacob and Jessica to come up here, and I know that they, they've already, come on, come on, guys, look at this. <laughs> now, they serve as the SoCal DYD's district youth directors, and uh, me and Tristan were honored to be able to do that. Our family was able to do that for uh, a stint while we were here simultaneously serving here at the church. And, and they went ahead, and I know uh, Mike mentioned camp, but this is the guy right here. This is the guy. These are the leaders of that camp, and I want them to greet you. This is your first time being here because they they just stepped down as youth pastors where they served as youth pastors so now they're traveling well they they came all the way here across you know here to hear me preach today that was a real reason that i'm just kidding it's a joke but i want them to greet you today because i know this is what pastor mark would do and so i, I want you guys if you don't know them you need to get to know them these are solid people these are solid people and so i i want them to greet you sorry if i put you on the spot man is that all right <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to be here with you guys and worship with you guys this morning. Um, don't have much to say, but uh, I'm happy to be here and we're ready for the Word of God. You got anything you want to say? Oh, yeah. I'm going to plug camp. <laughs> Thank you for having us. We're excited. We did come to see TJ. <laughs> uh, but we are excited. We are hosting our, our camps, our annual camps. And this year, we're actually adding a college retreat, um, which we are stoked about. Aaron's our first one to register, actually. He's stoked to go. <laughs> Um, so we just want to encourage you, please send your kids. Um, it's a great experience. Um, we need adult workers. We need kids to be there. Um, so yes, that QR code, you can scan it right from your seat. It'll take you right to the registration. Um, and get your kids registered. It's an awesome experience. Um, we've got them for littles all the way up through high school and college this year. So please, please send your kiddos. Um, we love to have them, and it's a great experience. Yeah. Now, now that I got a chance to gather my thoughts, um, the theme is equipped, and you see, you know, the chevrons there is a, is a, a 
military theme and you know we were, really want our uh, kids to be equipped um, as they as they grow in in every age group from kids even in college it's important to be equipped and and um, know the things of God and what he has planned for you um, everybody has a purpose and a plan and our goal with this military theme is to uh, really focus on training physically spiritually uh, and mentally to do the work of the Lord and uh, the calling on our lives and uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun stuff um, I was in the military so I know quite a bit of uh, some military training that we're going to run all of our kids through in our uh, college. There may be an obstacle course and some type of uh, guns. Not real guns, toy guns. Thank you. Come on, give them a hand. Well, come on up, Tristan. I'm going to ask my wife to come up here, and uh, I want her to greet you, my beautiful wife of... 18 years, almost 19. We've been married 19 years. I'm only 21, and so... <laughs> Sorry, I'm not. All right, and so I'm going to have her greet you. Good morning. We miss you guys so much. So it is so good to be here. Um, man, you get busy with life, and you kind of just go, 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 and then when you can stop and, like, hug the necks of people that are just like family, you just realize how much you really miss them. So thank you for having us. Um, God is so good. He has been so faithful, and Indiana is great. Great. <laughs> um, I looked at the weather there today. It's 68, so, and gas is 450. Yeah, <laughs> just rubbing it a little, <laughs> but um, yeah, we love it. God has just been amazing. Our church is growing, and um, we have people that just want to serve God, and we can leave, and it they just do it, and it's it's a blessing. We feel every week like God, why do we deserve this? You know, so. I am just in awe of all he has done and how faithful he is um, in every part of life. So we miss you, though. If you're in Indiana, we would love to have you come visit us um, at our church and just come see what God's doing. He's moving all across the country. Um, yeah, so, and good job this morning, babe. I haven't heard TJ do worship since we left here. Good job. Well, thank you, Tristan. It's it's so good to be here and uh, honestly served here for five, almost, well, I don't know, it was right at five years, right at, and uh, and when we left, it was, it, it, it was tough on us um, leaving because we loved you guys, and this was a real proving ground um, for us going into where we serve now, and there were some great things we served under great leadership here. You have the some of the best pastors in the world i don't know if you know that but you you're spoiled you're really really spoiled and sometimes you don't realize you're spoiled when you are spoiled and so when they get back you need to hug their neck and say i appreciate you and i love you because i can tell you this i talk to pastor mark probably at least at least once a month i we call and we talk and i have to make sure when i call him that i give myself a window to talk to him because Usually our conversations go about an hour or so, but I, I love the wisdom that he pours into me. And I, can, I say, hey, pastor, I have this situation going on. Well, how would you do this? And he gives me some great insight because he's seasoned and I'm working on getting seasoned. And so uh, and I, I appreciate I appreciate uh, all that they did. Kim, I know they're not here, but can you give your pastors a hand clap? We I want to honor them today. And Zaylee Wyatt, stand up. All right. The big ones on the right, on my right, is Wyatt. The, the little one on the left is Zaylee. Just if you, if so, <laughs> give them a hand clap. You, you can sit down. So there, it's so, so good to have my family uh, here and uh, just uh, so good to see everybody. I just want to say that. If you have your Bible, we're going to be in 2 Samuel today. 
And uh, how many feel like that, how many know that life can throw some curveballs at you? And I mean, you live long enough, some things are going to happen in your life that you were not expecting. And, and oftentimes, uh, the enemy likes to work in discouragement, right? He likes to discourage. He likes to cause disunity in, in believers in the body of Christ. Um, he would rather see the people of God fighting over, um, you know, worship styles or what version of the Bible to use rather than to see the people of God praying together. And that's why I love this, this prayer thing that you guys are doing. We, we might jump on board with that because that is amazing. And, and, but the, the devil wants to cause disunity. So uh, we're Second Samuel uh, verse or chapter 23, verse 11 and 12. Um, if you have it, say, I got it. If you need a minute. Look on the screen. All right. This is, this is, what, it, this is what it says right here. Uh, it says, and next to him was Shama. Everyone say Shama. The son of, I call this guy Aggie. I don't know because, I don't know, Texas a gig Gigum. Uh, the Herorite. The Philistines gathered together at Lehi where there was a plot of ground full of lentils. And the men fled from the Philistines. And this is talking about Shama here, but he took his stand in the midst of the plot and defended it and struck down the Philistines. And the Lord worked a great victory. All right. Amen. And will you bow your, bow your heads with me? I, 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 I want to pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, God, I pray, Lord, that you would just use me today. God, as you see fit. God, let me be an oracle of you. God, I pray, Lord, let the words from my Mouth be from you and you only. God, anoint this service. God, anoint uh, the words that come from my mouth. God, I pray, Lord, that you would, God, let this seed go and let it land in, in our hearts today. God, may we forever be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everyone look at your neighbor. Say, wake up. All right, good. I just want to make sure you guys are awake today. Today, I want to talk to you guys on this, this topic of stand your ground. It's worth it fighting for all right stand your ground it's worth fighting for so the interesting story here david in this he's reminiscing he's actually about to die and i've learned this the older i get the more that you reminisce that means you're getting older amen the older I get, the more I reminisce, the more I realize I'm getting older because I have a lot more to reminisce about, right? And so, uh, so David, he's reminiscing here, and he's, he's reminiscing over his life, and he's thinking about he, these mighty men um, that he fought with. And he's talking about, in this bit of scripture, he's talking about Shama, which is one of those, those men. And so Shama's name, it literally means this. It means desolation or depression. And you guys thought your name meant really something bad, right? His name it literally means depression. Uh, that's that's rough. Well, you say, well, that's super depressing. Well, it gets a little bit worse for this for for this guy. His dad's name is is Aggie, and that means fugitive. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Some of you say this is my family you're talking about, um, and so his name means depression. His dad's name means fugitive, and he's a Herorite, which is which means he's a mountain dweller. He's a hillbilly. He's from the hills of Tennessee. Okay. And so Shama should have been, uh, I mean, if you put that all together, should have been a desolate, depressed man from a fugitive mountain dweller. I mean, uh, by all rights, he should not be in this list of David's mighty men um, if, you, if you judge him just based off of his past and his name. And so, but how many know that no matter what your past is, God can do great things in you? Amen? Amen. Now, how many are with me? Say, I'm with you. Uh, that means no matter what your background is or what your past is, that you have potential with God. Amen? And how many, how many say, I have potential with God? How many believe that today? I have potential. Maybe you're a little bit older. You have potential with God. And, and so this guy, by all rights, uh, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't be here. And matter of fact, if he was to go through a job interview, he would be the first person they would be like, thanks, see you later, right? Uh, but he shouldn't be there. But here goes Shama. He goes from Shama to ShamWow. But wait, there's more. Oh, some of you are with me. That's all right. Thank you. 
Shammah, uh, he's in this physical battle here, him and the Israelites, and uh, the Philistines have come in, and there's a troop, and, and I, I did a little research on a troop, and I, I couldn't get a, a clear answer. Some people believe it was 50 soldiers, some say up to 600 soldiers, but, you know, there he is, but we too are in a spiritual battle, and there's times where we have to stand our ground. Uh, you say, well, uh, you know, I just go to church to get fed and, 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 you know, go about my life. But the truth is, here's what I know. The devil is playing for keeps. He doesn't play fair. He, he is, he is come, matter of fact, uh, he, he wants to destroy you. So, and God has not called us as believers and, and the people of God to roll over every time the enemy throws something at us, to get depressed, to be down, you know, if, if nothing else out of the pandemic, I've learned, you know what? Sometimes you just got to stand your ground in the middle of things. So Galatians, amen, amen. Galatians 5, 1 says this. I, I love this verse. It says, stand fast, therefore. And the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage today today I want to tell you if you're struggling in your life sometimes all you got to do and all you know how to do is stand all right so here's the here's the first thing I want to talk to you about here's point number one point number one I got 17 points I'm joking I got three points point number one right here stand stand all right, everyone stand with me. Oh, man, some of you are fast. Some of you are fast. Oh, some of you say, oh, Pastor, why are you making me stand, right? Stand with me. This is all I want you to do. I want you to stand, and then I want you to plant your feet. All right, now sit down. All right, so now we know, right? Uh, isn't it irritating? Do you guys get a little bit irritated when someone's standing in your way? Last night, I was, we, we went to the grocery store, me and Tristan, we had to get a few things. And there were some people in the freezer section, and they were standing in my way, and their cart was in my way. And I was looking at them going, get out of my way. I know you guys are holy, and you guys don't do those kind of things, but I, I was doing that. But here's, here's the thing. This is, this is the, you know, our job as believers is to stand in a victorious posture. And sometimes Christians, we, we walk around like we're, like we're broken. Like, and listen, there are seasons in life. But let, listen, if you hear me today, I want to encourage your heart. You need to stand. So Shama, he did that in this moment. There he is, and he is guarding this thing, a lentil field, the Bible calls it. It could be beans. It could be uh, peas. He, he is guarding a pea patch. And most of us would probably be like, hey, I would be willing to let go of a few peas and not fight but he stands his ground i love this in verse 12 it says this but he took his stand in the midst of his plot of the plot he took his stand in the midst of his plot so here's the first thing if we're going to live a victorious life number one we got to learn to stand all right we got to learn to stand. See, uh, the, the, the Bible, why do we have to learn to stand? Well, 1 Peter 5, 8 says this because I talked about the devil. It says this, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. The enemy's playing for keeps. He's trying to destroy you. He's trying to get you bound up. He's trying to get you uh, where, where you don't feel like you're living a victorious life. That's the way the devil works. He is active in taking ground. And listen, as believers, we sometimes just got to say, devil, enough's enough. I'm drawing a line. Don't cross this line because I am a child of God. Amen. And so in other words, you know, Peter's saying this, keep your head on a swivel because the enemy will try and pounce you. You know, like I, I think of this when I go hiking in the mountains and uh, here in California, especially not so much in Indiana because we don't have mountains really. But uh, here, when you go hiking in the mountains here, my head is on a swivel because I know that there are mountain lions and I know that there are bear in the Sierra Nevada. And listen, a, a mountain lion, you're not going to know a mountain lion is on you until it is on you, right? And that's the way that the enemy works. See, the Bible tells us in John 10.10 10, that the enemy's goal is to steal kill and destroy that's what his job is but can i tell you the the second part of that verse is jesus says but i have come to give you life and life more abundantly come on and give jesus a hand clap of praise amen here's the problem 
Here's the problem. Some of us are sleepy Christians. Some of you are falling asleep right now. Some of us are sleeping, slumbering Christians. And here's the thing. If we aren't careful, man, how many have ever fallen asleep in a bad situation where you shouldn't have fallen asleep? I remember one time we were doing some work at, at a church when I was growing up, and, and we were doing a flooring, and we had this machine that... I don't remember what it was, but it, it had exhaust on it, and they put it outside the door so the exhaust would go out there. And someone had put, in the, put the church van next to this machine. Well, I was tired, and I laid down next to this machine, breathing in exhaust, and then I got really, 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 really tired doing that. But listen, I put myself in a position that was super dangerous, right? And oftentimes in our lives, we get spiritually tired, and, and, and we get a little bit dreary. But can I tell you something? The Bible says, I, I, I mean, it says to stand. But look, I don't know very many people who can stand and sleep at the same time. Now, maybe some of you can, but I can't. Listen, uh, and so if you're standing, if you're standing on the word of God, if you're standing on what you know is right, listen, I can tell you this, that you are alive and well. Amen? And so Shama, I love this story because he, he decided to take a stand. When all the other people of Israel who were willing to give up, he said, I am willing to fight for this land. And too many Christians are choosing to flee rather than to fight the good fight. Amen? And now, see, I want you to think about this. We, we see this. It's a lentil field. It's a pea patch. It's, a, it's, a, it's something that's not really, uh, most of us would be like, that's not important. But let me ask you this. Let me give you some examples of the pea patch in your life is this. What about your mind? Some of you have allowed the enemy to come in and cause distraction, uh, depression, and all kinds of things. What about this? What about in your marriage? Some of you may be struggling in your marriage. The enemy is coming in to kill, steal, and destroy. What about your family? Maybe you have wayward kids, kids who are struggling. And let me tell you something. It is worth fighting for. I don't care how aggravated you get at your kids and at your family. They are worth fighting for. What about this? What about your church? Come on, there's a time where you got to stand and say, hey, this is worth fighting for. This is worth standing for. So, so when others say that the Israelites left and Shammah stayed, when others say, hey, let's go, let's regroup, let's take the next battle, well, you got to be like Shammah and say, no way, this is my lentil field. And we're going to fight. We're going we're gonna to be there. And I don't care. And I'm determined. I'm determined. And I'm, not, I, I'm determined to advance and stay here and, and not allow the enemy to take control of my mind, to take control of my family, to take control of my marriage. Amen? Ephesians, Paul, would, he would go on to reiterate this in Ephesians chapter 6. And this is a very, very popular verse. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, it says this. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to. That you might be able to. Oh, stand against the what? The schemes of the devil. God has given you everything you need. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having all done all to what? Stand firm. Something about standing. See, can I tell you something? The devil is a bully. He's a big bully. That's all the devil is. Listen, Jesus beat the devil on the cross. He's already beaten Satan. And matter of fact, that roaring lion is, is like, it, it talks about an old lion that its teeth are not as strong. And the only thing that old lion can do is roar. It can't really do anything. But the devil, he's just a bully. He's trying to intimidate. He's trying to discourage. He's trying to cause fear. He's, and fear paralyzes us. Right? Fear paralyzes. When we're scared, we don't know what to do. We, we just stop. He's trying to destroy marriages. He's trying to make you give up on your kids. Can I tell you something? you got to be like Shama, and you have to stand your ground and say, no, devil, you can't have this this time. Amen? 
It kind of reminds me of Ralphie from the Christmas story. You remember that movie? And Ralphie, every day he goes home and he's being chased by a bully. But finally, one moment in that, in that story, he takes on that bully and he beats him up. Listen, you do not have to be the devil's punk. Amen? And so the armor of God was to be made to be used standing, not sitting. And you need to stand in a posture of victory. Listen to me, child of God. You need to stand in the posture of victory. I, I, I love this. See, if we, if we break this down, I'll do this really as fast as I can. We, you know, the, the armor of God is this, the belt of truth. You know what the belt of truth does? It holds on all the other pieces of the armor. We stand on the truth of God's word. Amen? How about this? The breastplate of righteousness. Listen, is my life acceptable to God? God, I want to live not for my will, but your will. God, your word says, be holy, for I am holy. Lord, if you said that we could be holy because you are holy, Lord, I can stand in that. Lord. Lord, I can walk in that. Uh, what about this? The feet shod with the gospel of peace, taking the gospel forward. The shield of faith to distinguish the darts of the enemy. Devil's been fighting you. Hey, use that faith and say, get out of here. Amen. I love this. How about the helmet of salvation to protect my mind? Amen. What about this? The sword of the spirit or the word of God. God has given us everything we need to defeat the enemy. I, I like this one. This one doesn't even fall into this list, but it's there in verse 18. Maybe praying. I love this. Ephesians 6, 18. It says this. Praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. So you can even add that one in there if you, if you want to. Listen, uh, to that end, keep alert with all preservations, making supplication for all the saints. So when I wear the armor properly, when I pray in the spirit, I will stand and I will be alert and I'll be watchful of what the enemy's doing. And I'll be able to say, hey, the enemy's trying to, to get into this camp. Not today, Satan. Amen. Everyone say, not today, Satan. Here's the second thing. After you stand, this is what you got to do. Everyone say, push back. Push back. I like this. this. This next verse says this. And this is what he did. This is what Shammah did. And he defended it and struck down the Philistines. Now, if you're going to push back, if you're going to defend something, you're going to have to fight, right? You, you, listen, if you just stand there and they're just coming, listen, you, you, you might do something, but you're going to have to fight back. The second thing that he did was he pushed back. He fought back. He punched the enemy in the nose, right? I'll never forget when I was in fourth grade, I got in a fight. Yeah, it was a big fight. And I'll never forget this young guy. He, he told me he was picking on me, and he called me a girl. And I said, enough's enough. Let's go. You want to get me going? And I remember we got in a fight, and he punched me in the face. And I tell you what, I got angry, and I punched him, and I was like Ralphie. I was just going at him as good as I can. He got a black eye. I got a bloody nose. I won the fight. Woo! I'm not saying you should fight. You know what I did next? I invited him to church because I knew if he didn't come with me to church, he'd be scared not to come to church with me. That's just how I operate. I'm sorry, all right? But... Uh, but I love this. He, 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 to protect the bean patch, he didn't just stand there, but he fought the enemy as they came. Hey, get out of my bean patch. Get out of here. He did it with his, with his hands, with his wits, and with his strength. With the help of the enemy, or with the, the help of the Lord. See, we have to use what the Lord has given us. Amen? And Paul in Ephesians 6, you know, we talked about the armor of God. He would go on to say this. For we do not wrestle against what? Flesh and blood. But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. So first off, here's the first thing you got to know when you're, when you're standing your ground. You need to know who your enemy is. See the G.I. Joe? And knowing is what? Half the battle. Okay, I got three people that know what G.I. Joe is in this building. All right. Knowing is half the battle. You got to know who your enemy is. See, we're in this war, and it's a spiritually speaking, and our enemy is not flesh and blood. Now, some of you may have kids, wayward kids, and you may be frustrated to wit's in with them. Can I tell you, they are not your enemy. It's the spirit that is working within them. 
All right? And so we got to know who our enemy is. See, your enemy is not the person on the other side of the political aisle. Oh, man, that bounced off every wall in here. That's okay. But our enemy, our, we got to know who he is. Uh, you know, and oftentimes we want to be rude. We want to be obnoxious to people because we don't like them or whatever the case. But your enemy is not your wife. Oh, the wife said... Your enemy, <laughs> thank you, my wife said amen really heavy up here. Your enemy is not your friends. Your enemy is not your boss. Listen, and Paul, would, he, would, he would go on and he would rank these, these different principalities and things. And he would give us this, this sequence of, of things. And he said, your enemy is not flesh and blood, but it's spiritual things. These, these demons, these things in high places. Matter of fact, you know, in Daniel 10, there's a story where, where Daniel is praying. And when he's praying, it takes him 21 days to get an answer for his prayer. Because when he's praying, the angel that went to, to give this prayer to the Lord uh, got in a fight up in the heavenly. And while he was fighting and trying to get loose, finally Michael the archangel came down, clean house. And so he could come and he said, finally, I've got this answer to you. See, uh, have you ever been in an area in, uh, you know, and I don't know, so for some of you who have traveled, have you ever been in an oppressed area where you know there's just oppression? Maybe there's a lot of drug ad addiction. Maybe there's a, a lot of uh, one particular issue. I'll never forget one, when we lived in Texas. I, we, we lived about 50 miles from Waco. We went to Waco one time. And all the kids were asleep, and I thought, man, I am going to go by the David Koresh, the Branch Davidian place, because it was just right off the road. And so they were all asleep. I knew they wouldn't want to go. And I remember going there, and when I drove up to that place, can I tell you something? Something was unsettling in my spirit. And I don't know what it was, but I know that there was something there. And, and so as the people of God, sometimes we have, to, we have to understand, we have to be able to recognize these things, all right? I, if you're with me, say, I'm with you. All right, so look at this. So uh, in Matthew 16, I, I love this. Jesus is, is predicting, see, uh, he's predicting his death here. And I, the devil, man, you know, people, we're not wrestling against people, but sometimes the devil uses people. Amen? And listen, we have to be discerning as the people of God to look and say, you know what? That's not that person because that's out of character for that person. But there's something in them, and we need to recognize that. So look at this. I mean, Jesus did this in Matthew 16. He's predicting his death to his disciples, and Peter says this. Lord, and Jesus said, I'm going to die. And, and Peter, you know, he's really always fast. And he's quick to say, Lord, that will never happen on my watch. I, that's never going to happen to you. And you know what Jesus said to him in Matthew 16, 23? He said, but he turned and he said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on things of God, but on the things of man. He's talking to Peter, but he's, he's calling out the thing working within him. And now Peter, he meant well. He was trying. He, I think he absolutely meant well. But here's the thing. Jesus knew something. I have to go to this cross. And listen to me, you're not going to discourage me, devil. You're not going to keep me from doing, from doing what I need to do. See, I, I, and I've seen it, especially in pastoring, I've seen it in well-meaning people come up and they give you a backhanded uh, compliment. Amen? And that happens oftentimes. But listen, and, 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 but Jesus calls it out. He says, don't be a stumbling block. There's been moments in ministry where I have to go, you know what? That was not that person. There's something in them, and I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to pray for them. So look at this. Uh, uh, verse 13 says this. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the, uh, withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand firm. Everyone say stand firm. So now we know who our enemy is. Therefore, we are to put on the armor of God. Why? So we can withstand. Everyone say withstand. You know what withstand means? Resist. Resist. It means to resist. And Paul says Hey, he says this, to resist the devil here in Ephesians. And then James would go on and further say, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and what? He will, he will flee. You are to resist. Fight the devil. Don't be a pushover. Don't be a quitter. Oh, man. And, and you got to be like Shamus, standing in the bean patch saying, no, 
I'm going to defend this thing. I don't care who comes. I don't care how many there are. I'm just going to go until I can't go anymore. So how do I push back? How do I resist? I think one of the greatest uh, offensive weapons on the, on the armor of God is this thing right here, the Word of God. Some of you need to pick it up. Some of you need to dust it off. Some of you need to, to make it a practice each and every day to read it. Here's the thing. When the enemy comes in and starts to tell me lies, this is what, how I know if the enemy's lying to me right here. Amen? I, I love this. The Word of God, the sword of the Spirit. Hebrews tells us it's sharper than a two-edged sword, right? And in, in Matthew 4, Jesus, he goes out and he's tested. And uh, when he goes out, he's tempted by the devil. And he's fasting in the desert alone. And Satan, he comes to him and he's, he's out there fasting. And he says, you know, Jesus, if you're hungry and if you're God, hey, you have the ability to turn these stones into bread. How many have ever been hungry? Amen. And, and so and Jesus, he looked and he answered the devil and he says, it is written Man shall not live by what? Bread alone. Where did he get that? Right out of the word of God. So Satan then takes him to the highest point of the temple. And he says, hey, hey, he tempts the Lord again. Hey, if you are the son of God, then throw yourself down from, uh, from here. And then uh, the devil, he's sneaky. He, he actually brings in a little scripture here. And he says, for it is written, uh, the angels will not let your foot strike a stone. So he's, he's trying. Jesus, he's trying to confuse, and Jesus again goes, it is written, do not put the Lord to a test. And then the devil goes and takes him to the highest mountain, and he says, hey, look at all these kingdoms, look at this world. If you bow to me, if you bow to me, I'll give you all these kingdoms of this world. And I like Jesus' response. He, he says, hey, away from me. That's the first thing he says, and then he says, for it is written, Worship the Lord God and worship him only. I want to show you something. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 11, it says this. Then the devil what? Then the devil what? Then the devil left him. Listen, resist the devil and he will flee. All right, here's number three. I'm going to ask the worship team to come. I told you. Only 14 to more, more to go. Here we go. Here's, here's number three. Yield. Everyone say Yield. Yield, yield. Next bit of scripture in Samuel says this, and the Lord worked a great victory. Who worked the victory? Shema, he, all he did was yield. He yielded to the Lord. He yielded to God. And I don't know about you, but my tendency and your tendency, and maybe your tendency is this, is to run and, and jump ship when things get tough, to duck my head, to go hide, to, to, to retreat, to give up. But listen, I like Shammah. He does not yield to man. He yields to the Lord and says, I'm willing to fight here. I'm willing to stand. I can see him. I, honestly, I, I mean, I, I don't know if he did this, but I, I don't know. I think it's, it's good. I can almost see him quoting Joshua 1, 9, saying, Have I not commanded you, be strong and be courageous, and do not be frightened or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. When you're standing, when you're fighting, when you're resisting, listen, know that the Lord is fighting with you. Amen? You know, come on, worship team, come on up. It doesn't say uh, uh, that, that this was his bean patch, but, but it, this is what I like about Shama. It's not maybe his bean patch, but he knows this much. It's not the Philistines. That's, I love that. I love that. Hey, it may not be my bean patch, but it does not belong to the Philistines it's Israel's. It was the king's. And I wonder, I wonder if we yielded our will and said, God, this is yours and this is worth fighting for. How many of us would stand in the gap for people and begin to pray for people? Hey, my friend Jake over here, maybe Jake is going through something, but I can stand in the gap and pray for him and say, hey, I, he's not me, but I can pray and I can stand and I can say, God, cover him, be with him, protect him, God, help him. Him, but whatever his struggle is, listen, I think it's time that we begin to pray. We begin to stand for one another. And I wonder if we yielded our will and said, God, this is yours. And this is worth fighting for.
my mind, Lord, it's yours. And it's worth fighting for. Some of you have fought with depression. Some of you say, Lord, this is your heart. And it's worth fighting for, Lord. Lord, this is my wife's heart. Lord, and we're struggling, but this is worth fighting for. Your kids, your peace of mind, your hope, your calling, your purpose, your freedom from bondage of sin. See, when I stand in the armor of God, uh, uh, when, when I resist with the sword of the Spirit and the Word of God and praying in the Spirit, and then I yield, I'm putting it in His hands. I'm doing all I can do, but I'm saying, hey, God, here it is. Lord, you can take this battle. You can win this battle. I can't do it alone. Listen, I can't do it alone. I don't know about you. I'm not that strong. Listen, the devil is, is, is smart. He's cunning. He, he knows more than you know. He, he, he will catch you when you're your weakest. He doesn't ever strike when you're strong. And, and, and he'll come along. But listen, this is what I know. When I yield to the will of God, he goes before me. He fights my battles. Amen. Shema was victorious that day because God worked a great victory in his situation. Amen. Maybe you're here today and say, hey, pastor. I need the Lord to work a victory in my situation. You say, I, I don't know you at all. And who are you to speak into my life? Man, I am a nobody. But I'm going to tell you, I love Jesus. And I love you. And let me, let me just tell you this. I don't know maybe everybody in here, and I don't know your situation. But you're worth fighting for. And I'll stand in the gap with you. Amen. And I'll fight with you. Can I tell you this? Your, your, your pea patch is worth fighting for. Stand when others run. Push back and resist. Yield to God and God will give you the victory. Will you bow your heads with me all across this building? Lord, Heavenly Father, God, I pray. Lord, that maybe someone's here, Lord, they're struggling in their life, God. Maybe, maybe they're struggling with depression. Maybe they're struggling with sin. I, I don't know. But God, I, I pray today, Lord, Lord, that you would give them strength to stand when it seems impossible. God, help them to stand. God, remind them what the Word of God says. God, help them to stand with the armor of God. God, the thing that maybe they're struggling and, and want to give up with, God, it's worth fighting for. Maybe there's some moms and dads who are praying for wayward sons and daughters. They're worth fighting for. Don't give up. Don't quit. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. When doubt comes in, resist the devil. When the devil says, hey, that kid's not ever going to change. They're not going to amount to anything. Say, no, devil, get your, get your hands off of my mind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay here. I'm going to fight. God, help them to yield, God, their lives, God, and their desires to yours. And say, God, Lord, do what you need to do in me or to help that situation, God. Maybe you're here today. You say, Pastor, I'm, I'm struggling. I've been struggling in my heart. I just want prayer in my situation with, with no one looking around. Would you lift your hand, anybody in the building? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hands going up everywhere. Thank you. Hmm. Just wait just a moment, just a moment. If you're struggling today, I, look at me real fast. I'm just going to share something I just felt like the Holy Spirit wanted me to share. Hmm. I'm going to be a little transparent today. Is that all right? Sorry. 
here's the thing. All of us fight battles. Even pastors. And uh, just to be perfectly honest, I, I mean, everything's great at our church. There's a lot of great things. But over the last three weeks, I've been battling something just in my spirit. Not any, not any, not sin, nothing like that. Just battling, just battling. The enemy's just fighting, 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 fighting. And you may say, oh, that was a good word for me, Pastor. This was a good word for me. And I've determined in my mind that I'm not going to be the devil's punk. I'm going to stand. Whatever your situation is, listen. Hey, Pastor, I'm going to be the first one to come down today and say this. God, move in my situation. Move in my situation, God. My pea patch is worth fighting for. I'm not going to roll over. I'm not going to quit. The, the first thing that I want to tell you today is many of you, the first thing is fear tr- keeps you from doing, from moving. Take a step of faith today. I, I know. No one's everyone's looking at us. It's all right. Take a step this morning. Take a step this morning. Come, Come this on. way. Many of you raised your hands. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. There's more of you. Listen, there's more of you. I, I know. I know it's tough. Come on. I, come on, Tristan. We, I need some people. Jake, will you pr- come pray? I have people that I know. If you if prayer words clever, come on. Can you come pray uh, with us? Listen, there, hey, there's more of you. Come on. Come on. Listen, I'm going to lift my hands and say, God, my pea patch is worth fighting for. Devil, you can't have this. I'm going to fight you because the Lord has given me the strength to stand in these moments. Lord, you've given me the armor of God. God, you've given me what I need, Lord. So, Lord, I'm standing. Listen, if you're, if you're here today, stand with me. Stand with me. I want you to stretch your hands up here for those who are struggling in their heart and in their spirit today. Come on. Just begin to pray for them. If this, if this may... You may not know them, but if this was you, you would you would hope that they would that you would be praying for for you. They would be praying for you. Come on, begin to pray. Come on, begin to pray. Lord, we lift you up. I'm going to stand. I'm going to fight. I'm not going to bow down. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to be like Shama. What made Shama great was he didn't quit. He didn't quit. When it got hard, when everyone left, he didn't quit. He put one foot in front of the other and he stood his ground and said, No, no. No, it is worth fighting for. Amen. Come on, begin to pray. Come on, church, begin to pray.
Father God, today, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would seal this word in our hearts. God, I pray, Lord, that you would renew strength, God. God, that you would renew vision today, God. God, I pray, Lord, that when, when we feel like quitting, when we feel like rowing over, God, give us the strength to stand. God, and help us to put on the armor of God so we can stand and resist the enemy. God, I pray, Lord, that we would yield to you, God, all that we are. And, Lord, that you will give us a great victory. And, God, we thank you for this word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Come on and give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Even when I come on, let's sing that. You never stop. stop. Never stop. Come on, let's declare that today. Never stop. Never stop. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop. Never stop working. Never stop. Never stop working. Even when, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. Never stop, never stop working. with us today I know this isn't my church but this is my church I don't yes yeah, so if you're a guest we are grateful that you're here today glad that you came to be in the house of the Lord did you feel the presence of the Lord today and we're challenged today amen and um, I'm gonna stand and I'm gonna push back and I'm gonna yield to God amen uh, I, so I, I just want to encourage you today and I honestly if, if don't leave until I get to hug your neck at least, all right? Let me hug Let me hug your neck before you leave and talk to you for a few minutes. And I'm going to do this. I don't know. I, I, I'm just going to pray the blessing. Is that all right? Are we good with that? You guys good with that? Listen, I have adopted this at my church, and I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. And so uh, if we stretch your hands this way, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Amen. You, you are dismissed. <laughs>